someone just dim the lights on the front here? Help you just move this maybe over there. Uh, I just want to bring the podium oh, up to the side. When I share with a person that I believe in God, I sometimes get the response, hasn't science proven that God is a myth? I smile and respond, since the recent discovery of DNA, science is actually proving the existence of God. I then get a bewildered look as if I just lost my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I may have lost my mind, but I'm going to share with you a great example from science for the existence of God. It's the human cell. A human cell is comprised of three ingredients by weight. Water, protein molecules, and DNA. To compare a human cell to a cell phone, the water is like the space inside your phone. The protein molecules is like the hardware of your phone. And the DNA is like the software on your phone. A cell phone without software is useless. And a cell without DNA is useless. Using this computer simulation from the documentary Unlocking the Mysteries of Life. I am going to take you inside the cell and show you how a protein molecule is manufactured. So here we're going to enter into the nucleus of the cell where the DNA is stored. And this is the DNA right here. I'll just pause it here. The DNA stores over a hundred thousand different protein molecule recipes as well as every instruction necessary to run the entire operation of the cell. Bill Gates said DNA is like a computer program but far far more advanced than any software ever created. A computer program is a series at its core, a series of ones or zeros. DNA at its core is a series of four chemicals, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Up here you can see in the picture what the chemicals look like. These are the chemicals here. Each one of these bars is, is one of the chemicals. And even though there can be three billion chemicals in a DNA strand, the software, or the intelligence inside the cell, knows exactly where to find the precise protein recipe to make that protein molecule. And so here we're seeing what's going to happen next is when it's found, this molecular machine here that you see unwinds the DNA to expose the instruction set at the precise area where, where it's located. Then another molecular machine, this one up here, copies the instruction set. This is called transcription. And the copied instruction set is called messenger RNA. The DNA is wound back up, and the messenger RNA is then escorted outside of the nucleus. It's controlled access just like security in a building can be. When it's clear to go, it leaves the nucleus 
and heads to a two-part factory called ribosome. The first part is, is to translate the messenger RNA message. The second part is, is to assemble a string of amino acids. For human protein molecules, this string is about 400 amino acids long. So here's the first amino acid being strung together. This is the second one. And then here's the third one. I used to think at one time that life could have happened from a chemical reaction in a pool of water. I no longer believe that, and neither does science. The odds to assemble these complex strings of amino acids to create one protein molecule and a simple living organism like bacteria needs 235 different protein molecules, each with its own unique string of amino acids grouped together. The odds of doing this randomly is 1 to the power of 122,470. A billion by comparison is nine zeros. This is 122,000 zeros. It's statistically impossible, no matter how much time you allow. George Walt, a Nobel Prize winner in biochemistry and a world expert in this area, said, I will not accept creation philosophically because I choose, because I do not want to believe in God. Instead, I choose to believe in that which I know is impossible, and that is spontaneous generation arising to evolution. In other words, Mr. Wald is saying a chemical reaction in a pool of water is a dead theory, but the alternative is God and he doesn't want that. So instead he chooses to believe that which he knows is scientifically impossible. So when the string here is so this string will then be assembled and after it's assembled it is then taken to a factory that will it's a barrel type machine you'll see it in a second that will then fold this long string of amino acids into a perfect 3D shape for that protein molecule being manufactured. And here's the barrel type machine. And this is so amazing given this, the fact that it's not just one protein molecule that's made, but six to 12 billion in a 24 hour period. This is a complex manufacturing facility. Toyota in Cambridge can maybe make a thousand Toyotas in one day. <laughs> and that's a world-class facility. So when it's assembled, another molecular machine, this one that you see coming off the side, will escort it to where it is needed within the cell. Dean Kenyon was a leading scientist in the area of spontaneous generation. He said, in reference to the discovery of DNA in this complex manufacturing environment, he said, this is the most compelling evidence of design on the earth. In conclusion, I may have lost my mind because I believe in God, but science has some great evidence for the existence of God, and this is one example. DNA and the complex manufacturing environment within the cell.